kind of hard to talk about Gaza after just hearing the eloquent words of, of Gazans, but I'll, I'll try to, to do it from my perspective really briefly. I'm a pediatric nurse practitioner, and in that capacity, um, I went to Gaza twice in the last year um, with health delegations sponsored by uh, Washington and Oregon Physicians for Social Responsibility. Um, I went both as a nurse practitioner interested and uh, passionate about equal about uh, human rights and pediatric health care. I also went as an American Jew because I felt like that was a very important thing to do. So we went to Gaza as health care providers for a couple of reasons. One was to just learn about the situation in Gaza beyond what we hear in the press about the health and human rights conditions there. So we went to go and then to come back and speak. We also went to support and stand in solidarity with our health care colleagues in Gaza and to offer in whatever way we could our professional support to them. Because I want to say something about the situation in Gaza. And I think we all here know it, but if there's press here or anybody, we just don't hear in the news. There is an ongoing military assault. There's an ongoing total blockade, siege of the borders of Gaza. So the nurses, the doctors, the health, the mental health workers that we met, totally beleaguered by their own trauma, the trauma that they live with day in and day out, and then having to treat that trauma in their patients. It's compounded by an incredible sense of professional isolation. They can't get out of Gaza. It's the biggest open air prison in the world. So they're separated from the global health community. They have to work in a healthcare infrastructure that can't get medicines. It's a constant shortage of supplies and equipment. The hospitals are dilapidated. The clinics are overwhelmed with the needs that they see. Lack of funding. The workload is unbelievable. And then, of course, there's the ongoing specter of military assaults. And these are military assaults, of course, we know against civilians, but targeting healthcare facilities. We saw the aftermath of hospitals, clinics, ambulances that had been the targets of the military. And just broadly, the health situation in Gaza, as a direct result of military actions, is a population living under siege. There's always food shortages, chronic malnutrition among children, among pregnant women, poverty, unemployment, an environmental disaster. In fact, the United Nations says in 2020, if there's not a change in Israeli military policy, Gaza is going to be uninhabitable. They talk in Gaza about ongoing traumatic stress. It's not post-traumatic stress. It hasn't stopped. It never stops. And I want to end by, by just telling a story that I think illustrates that that contrast of the incredibly dire, horrible human rights and health conditions, contrasted with what I think we saw from the voice of just two Gazans today, the steadfast, the pride, the ingenuity. I think Rachel knew that, she saw that, and you can't help but see that in Gaza. So just briefly, the story of one family, the al Samuni family, who lived on the outskirts of Gaza City, and this is during cast lead, the Israeli uh, military surrounded the area where this extended family lived, all ages, children, grandparents, great-grandparents. The family was herded into a number of houses. The houses were bombed. Originally about, initially about 23 people were killed. People were calling out on their cell phones for help, for, for rescue for the wounded. The Israeli forces surrounded this extended family neighborhood, would not let the ambulances in. The International Red Cross couldn't come in. Children were left for three days next to their wounded and dead parents, calling out for help. No water, no food. Finally, after three days, the ambulances came in, rescued the wounded, took out the dead, took out the living, bulldozed the houses over the dead, left 25, 26 members of this family dead. Many children were orphaned. What we saw there was a mental health team that came in and built a children's center over that area for the orphaned children of that whole neighborhood. Literacy classes, art classes, children's mental health therapy. And that's the story of what people are living with and having to contend with, and yet what they're doing in Gaza. And just to end, I think what I learned is that we have to remember that the health of a population is 100% directly related to justice. I think that's what made Rachel's work so important and the work that we all do so important. Thank you.